welcome this morning. Welcome to worship, whether you're in the building or online or watching later on YouTube. And as we gather, we acknowledge that we are gathered on Williams Treaty territory, the traditional territory of the Chippewas and the Mississaugas. And so we begin with our announcements, and there are plenty of them this morning. Just reminders about things like office, church office and virtual office hours. The minute for mission is posted um, in your, I'm not sure if it's in the copy of the bulletin that is here or not, but uh, certainly on the one that was sent out by email and is posted on our uh, website, the minute for mission is in there. Our YouTube channel is still active, and I do go home on Sunday afternoons and post the video of this morning's worship. Wow, our Wednesday outdoor worship, Joanne and I are lonely. We'd love more of you to join us. If you could mark it on your calendar, have an alert come up on your phone or something to remind you it's Wednesday evening. Joanne picked some really great hymns. We've learned some new ones. We've sung lots of old ones. We've had a grand time. And uh, Paige Pasco has had to resign from being our nursery care provider. She's getting far too busy with studies and work, and so we're looking for a new care provider, and uh, you have till October 1st if you're interested in applying for that, and you can uh, speak to Ken Crichton if you need more information. Session is working on a newsletter, and we'd like that information in by the 22nd. That is Wednesday this week. Communion. Just a note, I wanted to get this out a little bit early and remind us all. Our next celebration of communion is the first Sunday in October, October 3rd. And if you're going to be attending in person, we would ask you if you're able to bring your own elements, your bread and your juice. Um, if you forget or you're not able to do so, we do have some prepackaged um, cups and wafers for folks if they need them. However, if you are gluten-free, you're going to have to bring your own because they're not. I checked. And uh, moving on to all of the things that the stewards are doing, they're exhausting in their energy this bunch. There's the cheese orders. Those forms are new, due in today. So if you haven't already done so, please get those to Janet O'Neill today. Fun group is back, and uh, Julie is looking for you to drop those things off to her on Friday morning here at the church. And if you have any questions, Julie Kelman can answer those. She's at the back this morning, or you can catch her on the uh, information given about how to contact her. Harvest boxes. People really loved their harvest boxes last year, with all of the vegetables and things, and big mums, etc. So those are back, and uh, that will be October the 2nd, and uh, you can order those ahead. The information is there. And another takeout supper. And uh, this time an Italian theme with things like lasagna. And so that will be on Wednesday, October 6th, with the order deadline the 1st of October. And I think that's all they've got planned for a little while yet, but I think that's more than enough. It, it happens to be all women on the committee right now, and they are just going. And finally, we thank you. If you are able to continue with your church givings and to make your donations, there are several ways for you to do so, and we thank you for continuing to help make sure we can continue this ministry, whether in person or online or on YouTube. And so, we come now remembering that Christ is our guiding light. No matter where we are, no matter what situation we find ourselves in, Jesus is with us. The Christ candle is a reminder that the light of Christ, God's love within us, never goes out.
as I was humming along, my mother sent me an email the other day, and it said, you cannot hum if you're holding your nose. Yes, I tried it. You can't. <laughs> Just a little tidbit of information. <laughs> Let us join in our call to worship. We rejoice in the gathering of God's people. We give thanks for one another in the sanctuary and online. For each one is important in the body of Christ. Together we are more than a group of individuals. Let us therefore draw near to God, and God will draw near to us. Let us pray. Creator God, renew us this day in the stories of the Bible, through the joy of the music, with the challenge of your word and vision. Build us up that we may be faithful followers of the way of Christ. Amen. And our hymn is, O God Beyond All Praising. And at, at, at various hymns, you'll find that uh, Karen's going to stand up. We've put up plexiglass, as you may have noticed, so that uh, we can have someone sing. And uh, I think it's a little science experiment. We'll see just how forceful she is. And... Uh, <laughs> We, we, we encourage you to hum along, and uh, Karen's going to sing with us so that uh, we're not just all humming together. Do not be boastful and false to the truth. 
Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will free from you. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. And our hymn before story time, Touch the Earth Lightly. They start to become big sins, and eventually, you can't break it anymore. Eventually, you are so tangled up in sin that you can't live the right way anymore. Maybe you've forgotten how because you spent so much time with the wrong way. 
That's what James is reminding people about. They need to be careful. They need to think about the ways that they've been taught to share life with others. It's never easy when you're in community because we don't all think alike. We don't all want to do things in the same way. But if we don't continue to work together in the love of God and in the way that Jesus showed us, we get tangled up and we can't get out. So, we need to get untangled sometimes. In community, we can help one another do that. In prayer, God can help us do that. So our challenge each day is to stay untangled so that we can live the life that we are called to live. Amen. Before our young people go out, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So I would invite the couple of young people that are here to head out. Jane will, Jane will direct you to where you need to be in the back. Give them a chance to get out the doors to close. And then uh, Karen's going to share with us, every day is a gift from the Lord. <clears throat>
I think I can speak for everybody when we say it's so nice to see somebody sing in person. <laughs> Karen was very good about coming and recording things for us when we were only online, but it is nice to have it in person for a change. Our responsive psalm is Psalm 1 this morning. Blessed are those who do not follow the counsel of the wicked, or linger in the way of sinners, or sit down among those who mock. But their delight is in the law of God, and on that law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted beside streams of water, yielding their fruit in due season. Their leaves do not wither, and whatever they produce shall prosper. As for the wicked, it is not so with them. But they are like the chaff, driven away by the wind. Therefore the wicked shall not be able to stand when judgment comes, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For God watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. to accept that he, the Messiah, will suffer, and now he even adds in that he'll be betrayed, handed over to people who will treat him harshly. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they argued with one another about who among them was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dark him in the ball.
disciples. Jesus is forever saying things that to most of us make no sense. First shall be last and the last shall be first. He keeps saying things that kind of turn everything we think we know on its head. The interesting thing is this really echoed with me this week because I've been listening to the audiobook version of The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand, a book written way back in what, the 30s or something. And it's, it's been, it, it's 32 hours long, it's taken a while. When I got to a speech by one of the characters about how being servant of all and encouraging everybody to think that way is just the way you get them. It will actually serve to help overthrow them and give a few domination of the world. I thought, oh, hmm. But, but I've been reading this stuff forever. I've been studying all the things Jesus said, and that's what he keeps saying. And it's not just the Christian religion. Most religions have that background of care and compassion. As the Dalai Lama puts it, at the core of every single religious movement is compassion. Caring for others. Is that going to be our downfall? And I've been in a great amount of angst this week trying to sort out what you do with that. Because I never read The Fountainhead before, so this was, I did, had no idea it had this in it. And I kept thinking, well, you know, there's something to that idea that if we're constantly worrying about serving others, that there is that openness to being downtrodden by others who just keep demanding more and more of us. And if I'm trying to serve you and you're trying to serve somebody else and it just keeps going, hmm. And then I think, no, I think Jesus had it right, don't you? Because most of us live a better life when we have that compassion and care for others. When we're so insulated from others that we're not worried about that, life loses something. Reaching out and being with others, reaching out and caring for others, sharing with others, that's what brings us alive as humans. It's what was intended from the beginning, I think. Remember, in the very beginning, God created Adam, the first human. And then all the animals, and it was grand, and there was lots for Adam to do and to name and all of those things, but Adam was lonely. And God had to add Eve. So Adam had a companion. From the beginning of time, we were meant to be in relationship, caring for one another. So why is it that when Jesus says, the first shall be last and the last shall be first, it seems so jarring? Hasn't it always been so that caring for others is important? Now we know that that can take on negative places too, because. Some people are so busy caring for others, they forget about themselves. That's where that whole self-care movement has come from. Need a balance of that. But in caring for others, it becomes easier to hear the godly wisdom that James was talking about. When you're caring and reaching out to others, it's easier to hear God's call to you to continue to do that. And it's easier to hear God speak to you and those who care for you. We're not always good at that, letting others care for us. I must always be doing. 
Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. And so we take that on and forget that sometimes somebody needs to be doing for us. Jesus was always trying to teach that balance to his disciples. That balance between only seeing things one way or doing things one way and doing it in a different way that's even healthier. For there will always be some who serve others. But how do you serve? And there's where James comes in and starts to expand it. You can't just be last for the sake of being last. See, poor me, and I'm always letting everybody else. I'm just... That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about allowing others to grow. Allowing others to thrive, even as you yourself are allowed to thrive. It's not an easy balance. And in fact, Jesus saying things like this, Got him killed. So there's something to make us hesitant about always serving others, for that's all that Jesus did, was always reach out to the other. But that didn't end things. Reaching out to the other brought new life. And that new life has continued to reach down for thousands of years. First shall be last, and the last shall be first. No one has to be a doormat. No one has to always do all the work. Together, we share first and last and in between. For there will always be some of each, and you will always be in a different place. But if you strive always to serve, you will find your way. For Jesus calls us to serve. Not because we look good. Not because it builds us up. But because it lifts up the love of God for all creation. Amen. God calls us to share in God's work of caring for creation and for one another. Creation reminds us of God's generosity and invites us to live in that abundant living. And so, we acknowledge what we give, and we give of ourselves. we remember that tomorrow our country makes decisions and so we pray that those who cast their ballots and those who are chosen remember to seek wisdom for all let us pray we thank you God that although we are frail creatures we are not useless 
All that we do may be flawed, but not all is without value. Thanks for every good thing in which we have participated. Thanks for our faithfulness in times of doubt, our quiet optimism when those around us have been gloomy, and our compassion when others have been hard-hearted. Thanks for the courage we have been able to show under duress, the patience we have mustered for a prickly neighbor, the kindness we have shown to a stranger. Thanks for the money we've given to the church and the needy, the time we have given to others, the skills we've made available without thought of any reward. Thanks for the love we've shown to the unlikable, the trespasses against us that we've forgiven, the prayers we've offered for our enemies. Thanks for the times we have tried to redress injustices, the doggedness with which we have fought wrongs and for the crosses we have carried with Christ. Thanks for our readiness to find goodness in awkward relatives, our goodwill toward colleagues that others denigrate, and our joy in the rehabilitation of offenders. Thanks for the affirmation we give to friends, the times when we treat those at the checkout as real persons and the help we are ready to offer to strangers. Thanks for our courtesy when driving in heavy traffic, our generous attitude toward competitors, and our willingness to take a lowly place without playing the martyr. We thank you, most wonderful God, that your grace in us has not been in vain. For every measure of light and love and peace that we have been able to share, we give you thanks and praise. In this attitude of thankfulness, we bring before you, God, all those people whose vulnerability is especially at risk this day. The young people who, subject to peer pressure, are at risk of falling into addictions or risky behavior. The over-busy Christians who are in such a rush that they are in danger of losing touch with the peace that is the core of their faith the very heavenly-minded, who are so caught up in their own religion that they hardly see Christ in a needy neighbor. The leaders in business, politics, and unions who are ready to surrender their early ideals for personal gain or aggrandizement. The weary person who, having risen above many previous setbacks, is now close to giving in to bitterness and despair. The church pastor who, seeing so little of their early visions and prayers fulfilled, is on the verge of resigning from the ministry. The suffering people who feel that maybe their faith in God was wishful thinking and are about to retreat into bitterness. The folk in this congregation who this day might be wrestling with fears and temptations that threaten to overwhelm them. The people we hold in our hearts who most need to feel the spirit as they deal with grief, setback, disease, and more. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Most loving God, you are the companion of the lonely, strength of the weak, comfort of the sad, scourge of the apathetic, physician of the sick, rebuke of the self-righteous, friend of sinners, and the light of all those who must walk in darkness. Please give to your people the full blessing of your Holy Spirit, that we may keep the faith and practice the love, no matter what the circumstances. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
And our closing hymn, God Make Us Servants.